Welcome to the Janus quarterly video. Uh, it's the end of January uh, 2018, but we should talk a little bit about the fourth quarter of 2017. Uh, the big news, of course, uh, uh, election promise from Trump, uh, t tax cut, it happened, and uh, what happened to the markets? Well, the markets liked it. Uh, analysts started, started ra uh, ramping up their earnings for next year. They went up around probably between 5 and 7 percent in a couple of weeks and there's still expectations they'll go even higher into next year. And we're seeing numbers from 2017, 2018 growth, somewhere between 15 and 20% in S&P 500 earnings. So it's gonna have an impact. We're not really sure what it is yet, but it is positive. When you cut the tax rates the way they have, it's going to be a benefit for, for corporations, obviously. Right, and you know, the old saying, buy and rumor, sell and news. Uh, last year, the markets were strong, partly because of the t coming tax cut. Tax cut happens, it's still strong, so it's, it's a profound, increase in earnings. Yeah, and it's, a lot of it's been discounted already, but there's still a bit more to go, I would say, in terms of what's been going on. In this quarter here so far, earnings have been beating, 80% of companies have beat their earnings. Very, very strong quarter, earnings-wise. Right, so Wayne, the main question I get from everybody uh, is, uh, when is this party gonna end? Because it's a uh, you know, good five years now of really good returns. Well, they say the party usually ends when they take the punch bowl away, and they haven't take the, <laughs> folks, they haven't taken the punch bowl away yet. Uh, the Fed is starting to tighten. Uh, they've been t they're ahead of the curve of everybody else. Uh, they're starting to pull in their quantitative easing. They're shrinking their balance sheet. Uh, but the rest of the world still plans to increase their balance sheets next year. And that means putting cash into the system putting that back, ends print, up in the market. Printing more money. So global liquidity will still be fine. There won't be any issues with liquidity next year. And that usually drives these kind of markets. Now, valuation can cause a, you know, a near-term correction, that kind of thing. Those things can happen out of the blue. But uh, liquidity is still generous, and until they take that punch bowl away, it's, we're gonna have a party. Right, and what's confounding most uh, strategists is the lack of inflation. Um, when yeah, is that gonna come through? Yeah, at the, at the end of a stage, at the, at the end of a business cycle, we've, we've been saying we've been in that for the past year or so. Usually unemployment goes down, the economy picks up, inflation start, starts creeping up as, as wages go up. And that hasn't happened yet. There's a lot of, because of technology, because of Amazon, you know, the dislocation in retail, for example, and other areas, it's keeping, and, and China as well, it's keeping a lid on inflation so far. We think we'll see a little more of that creep in this, this year as the economy still heats up, but it isn't there yet, and that could extend the cycle even longer. What I find uh, is that uh, us human beings, our culture isn't a very good culture for looking at the stock market, because the stock market tends to work in like, 15 year increments. You know, the, the US stock market took 13 years to get above its 2000 highs, and now it's going up. It's, you know, in the last 30 years, the US stock market, Canadian stock, they're all up 7%. Uh, so it's just, it just hurts people to think that it, it, it can't last. So it's, uh, that's probably our biggest issue in talking to clients is um, the party's still going on. Uh, could be some bumps in the road, but it's not over yet. I uh, wonder what would tell us it's over, Wayne? What, would, uh, what signals would, would you really be sensitive to? Well, just more interest rate hikes ar around the world, tighter liquidity, the money supply. In 2001, 2008, money supply year-over-year -year growth was zero. In right. the U.S., it's now around 8%. Right. So you know, you, you, just a lack of liquidity out there would, would definitely have an impact. You know, valuation matters, of course. It, we could, that could cause some you know, 10% type corrections to the course of the year. That's, possible. That's a possibility. Uh, but in terms of what we see, the way we see the world, we still see stocks more attractive than bonds. We see uh, cash more attractive than, than bonds. And uh, so we still have a bit more stock in the portfolio. Our, our stock to cash indicators are neutralish right now based on the way we see the world. Uh, so we're still holding more stocks than bonds and more cash than bonds. Well, uh, the, the, the strategic uh, positions in the portfolio are pretty much unchanged. We're overweight stocks, but still have a good uh, exposure to high dividend defensive stocks. A uh, little more Europe than policy because of the good valuations, the high yield. Uh, and also they are getting ready to raise interest rates, haven't done it yet. So their currency should hold up. Uh, any comments about Canada versus the U.S. as we approach earlier, later into the night, later into the party? Canada usually does better. Are, are we going to up our Canadian weight at some point? We're about market right now in Canada. We're looking at uh, our models are starting to favor Canada. Um, 
Canada usually does well at the end of the business cycle. It's usually our time and globally. So we, we're starting to like Canada and the emerging markets here right now. Uh, we think Europe can come on a bit later on. We're still, we still have a solid weight there. We're starting to underweight the U.S. Uh, one of the issues right now that's uh, concerning me is this, how much currencies have moved. And if you see the U.S. dollar is broken down, the euro has rallied, the Canadian dollar has rallied. Uh, that is a form of, tight, uh, of tightening in Canada and Europe. Right. And so we may not get the rate increases in Canada and Europe, and we actually get more, may get more rate increases in the U.S. because their, their currency has fallen. It's actually helping accelerate their economy and provide more liquidity. So right. that, the currency could be a player here in this whole situation right. and uh, might slow Canada down more than we actually think. And, uh, but still, our stock market is tied to global growth, uh, the resource sectors. We, we're overweight the resource sector right now. We're overweight energy, materials. Uh, we still like financials. Financials are a good hedge against rising rates. We think rates are on the verge of breaking out here. We think 10 years, U.S. Treasury could have a 3% handle on it by you know, the next, next quarter, I'd say. It's really not a lot of uh, on-the-edge information to get out this quarter, um, but uh, it's important to pay attention as we go through the end of the cycle. And your portfolios are invested the same way today as they were the last couple of quarters. Thanks for your time today. We look forward to talking to you. Give us a call.